Yo, 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 we are in sync, bro. That was actually really, really good. That is crazy. Oh, man. Welcome back to another episode of the Afro Journal podcast. Killing those fireworks, Peter. Bro, I'm tired. I'm tired of those fireworks, man. Ah. I'm yeah. tired of I'm tired I'm tired of you yeah, know. tired of the ad lib. Yeah, I'm tired, bro, bro. And the yeah, I'm, tired. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm good, bro. Uh, I'm I know, good. I know, I like, guess going forward, we can we can stop being lazy and add the actual <laughs> sound effects of fireworks at this point. Okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> all right, so let's do it. But hey, welcome back. We're still hype. Ready for a new episode. It's your boy Chisom Okafo, and. It is um, Peter in Gechuki M. Chibuza Lugo Jr. Thank you know, you fine boy, no pimple. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, welcome, guys. Welcome back to another exciting episode. And um, yeah, I can get into the promo for last week. So last week, the promo I gave you was a large chair doesn't make a king. A large chair doesn't make a king. And um, I mean, this is that promo. I just think of a simple analogy, right? So I remember growing up, we used to have family dinners, right? So like all of us sit on the table at the same time. It was seven of us, seven chairs around. But there was this at the head of the table. That was where my dad always sat. They all got right? the top. Exactly. My dad's always <laughs> like <laughs> the guy, you know, the king of the house, pretty much, right? But it didn't matter though. Like if I went to sit on that chair, mm-hmm. I didn't automatically become the king, like the father of the house, you know, the man of the house. I was still the child. I was still the mm-hmm. the small boy. You get mm-hmm. me? So it doesn't matter the size of your chair. Who you are is who you're going to be. So if you are the main or guy at the top, you're still going to be that guy. Mm-hmm. Dope, dope, dope. Oh, yeah. um, if, you're, if you're the side chick, you're always going to be the side chick. <laughs> and Shout out to all chick. my side chicks. So, out so, there. Yeah, so I say main chicks should, they should not be angry. Because they are still the main chick, anyways. I never t- said anything about okay. main chicks. I'm talking <laughs> okay. about side chicks. Okay. Just main, side chicks, chicks. main chicks can, you know, be the people that sell the side chicks. I'm shouting to you guys out there. <laughs> that is good. Be shout out to all the main chicks. Because that's, 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 that's the only chicks I, I recognize. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, all right, man, let's get to this <laughs> <laughs> Let's get to this episode, man. So this week, what are we talking about, Peter? We are talking about African socialism versus capitalism. Mm. Oh, yeah. country. Hey, that's a heavy topic. It's a heavy one. Heavy one, honestly. And like, even just with this generation and the conversation between like the conversations going on, even like in the West everywhere, like what system of government or what economic mm-hmm. system is best to yeah. lead the country to success? Mm-hmm. All this socialism, capitalism, communism, people. <sighs> At least our generation, uh, you know, the grand masses are able to talk about it. Before, people just used to follow the road. Yeah. You like, you see, like, if, you see, if someone calls you a socialist, that can be an insult. If someone calls you a communist, that can be an insult. If someone calls you a capitalist, that can, that can be, be an insult. An insult. So, so it's, uh, on, all, on every side of the spectrum, there's always Wahala. But Exactly. But yeah, I mean, so we're going to just pretty much try to break it down for you guys today, like mm-hmm. what socialism is, what capitalism is, and um, talk about the, if not really like dive into how it affected the West and the East and all that, but we're just going to focus on how it affects African countries. Or the motherland. Exactly. The, the motherland. Afro Journal, that's what we're focused on, right? Um. So yeah, man, Peter, you want to start with the uh, definition of capitalism? Yeah, I'll, I'll give them the textbook, you know, definition of capitalism. Okay. So capitalism is an economic system whereby, you know, the means of production is based on demand and supply. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there's ownership of um, individuals, of private individuals. Gotcha. So that's, that's been, so it, it's more of, it has a profit incentive basis, whereas, you know, all the risk is put on someone. But all the you know profit is also put on that same individual. Okay, got you, got you. So the the individual bears all the risk, but he also bears all his profits. Yes, exactly. Right? And um, yeah. So um, when it comes to socialism, the text textbook definition is a political theory, whereby the means of production and distribution is owned by the community as a whole. Mm-hmm. So this usually means that the government can intervene in the democratic system, but all the decisions concerning like the means of production where you're going to build a factory where the price points of goods and services is going to be controlled by the working class it's going to be and democratic exactly and the aim of the game is equality and elimination of social classes 
Yeah, that's, yeah, 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 yeah. That's pretty much it. But obviously, in this day and age, so many people have different definitions for what these words actually mean. Right, mm-hmm. so when one person might say socialism, they might not be talking about this. They might be talking about something completely different in their head. Facts. <laughs> so it's a, it's always been a kind of a word, like words, socialism and capitalism have been used in so many different facets. But when it comes to the African point of view, now we're getting into the juicy exactly. part. I know we bored you about the you know, <laughs> exactly this is the just, definition part. Definition, we are boring we you, but we're, we're getting into the juicy. <laughs> just want to set the the basis, you know, exactly. set the basis straight, so that you know, in case someone doesn't has never heard these words before, at least they are, they have a foundation. Exactly. Now, Right, so when it comes to the history of socialism and capitalism in Africa, African socialism, exactly, African communi- cap- hey, communism, hey, communism, Africa, <laughs> African capitalism. Yeah, I feel like everything all stems from, at least from our knowledge, colonialism. Yeah, it all starts right. from there. It all starts from there. You wanna, you wanna break that down? Yeah, I'll, I'll give you the history of um, how colonialism affected the economic system in Africa. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So, you know, imperial colonialism gave Europe a segue to exploit Africa in both its cheap labor mm. and the abundant amount of natural resources that we had. Mm. You know, um, as you all know, we we're controlled by various nations like the UK, France, Belgium, Belgium Italy, Germany, all yeah. of those, all of those guys. And what happened? They put a system in place where it just benefited them, even mm. though it was capitalist, it was capitalist for the Europeans. So mm. we were used and taking advantage of. So we, we were put in a system where we had to be, and by we, I mean the African natives, were mm-hmm. put in a system where they had to be dependent on those sources of income from, from you the know, European from the Europeans. So and I, I'll give you an example. A white farmer immigrates to Nigeria. Mm-hmm. He is giving both not, uh, a, a land of, full of natural resources as well as cheap and readily available labor. Mm. which is the native Af- africans so they just give it to them like that no i mean they, it's not as if they give it to them they are they have they have well i don't know exactly what they how they gave it to them but yeah. i know that the, the labor was obviously if you if you really think about it if you are you you you're, you're in colonial rule and you're an african you have no sources of land you have no sources of income and the few that did you know they still have to go through the european vendors to be able to mm. sell their products to the europeans who gotcha. who, who were the people of demand and we were the suppliers mm. so there were so much disadvantages for us and you know we we're put in that system and we had to be d- dependent on them okay so yeah uh like i was saying like so the the white farmer would have to make his business profitable and um, what does that mean reduce your cost increase your profit mm. so that's that's that, that's exactly what happened so the 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 roots of labor had to be taken to the african man Gotcha. So, so they were getting cheap labor, that means their production costs was dropped by a lot. Mm-hmm. That means they could also lower the prices mm-hmm. of the goods and services that they were selling. Mm-hmm. Therefore, their mm-hmm. supply greatly increased. Sorry, the, the, their profits greatly yeah. increased because they mm-hmm. kind of controlled the pricing. Yeah. They, they, so what's going to happen is that Europe controlled the means of demand and supply, mm-hmm. and the black man was just a system putting that the Got African you. man Got so you. it was a tool using that he what didn't have any tool? advantage he didn't have any you know Benefits. money in the uh, yeah th- he didn't have any benefit there was not there was nothing beneficial for him so we're just still pretty much poor yeah we're poor so the capitalism was you know that system of capitalism was not necessarily capitalism because it's not capitalism given for the f- private sector it mm. was restricted capitalism it was colonial colonial capitalism, capitalism. yeah mm, that's it I mean, that's the first time I'm hearing that one. So that's an Afro Journal special, right? Yeah, it, 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 it's, a, it's a phrase coined by Phil Adebayo. Phil, who's that? Phil Adebayo is a very intelligent man, mm. uh, a, a, a very strong mentor of, of mine. And, you know, he, he definitely inspires me a lot. Phil Adebayo, he's not your alter ego or anything. What, which alter ego? What are you talking we'll, about? We'll go, we'll, we'll go with that. <laughs> Philip Adebayo, Italian ego. Okay. I don't well, understand what he's trying to connect. <laughs> what are you trying to connect between those two, bro? No, Chill, Allah, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> And um, okay, so that was pretty much it, right? They were, they were capitalized by the European elites or the European colonialists, the colonizers. Mm-hmm. And because of that, a lot of African people hated the idea of capitalism mm-hmm. because it was seen as something that was built to only serve the rich people, the whites. The whites, exactly. Okay. <laughs> So, white. <laughs> <laughs> yo, man, <laughs> wow, white people, white people, <laughs> yeah, the white. <laughs> that sounded so off. <laughs> the white said it. Yo, oh, I'm sorry man. to all my white people, man. 
<laughs> if I, uh, and, um, yeah. okay, so so if we now fast forward, right, uh, from the early 1900s to like the 1950s, 1960s, this is the era of independence, right? So Nigeria, striving for independence, yeah. Nigeria, Tanzania, a lot of no, African no. countries are getting their independence, right? So mm-hmm. the pretty much the governing power was shifted from the Europeans to we Africans. So now we're the yeah. ones to pay by our way, right? We have yeah, control the everything, right? This is where socialism entered the mix. And by socialism, I mean African socialism. So yeah. the question was now that, like, okay, how are we going to lead our countries into prosperity? Majority of the African leaders had this thought. But exactly. And uh, what they came up with was, first of all, we need to dissolve every tie to colonialism. Therefore, right. any system of government that the colonizers used, we are dropping it, right? Anything that it's resembles... African. Exactly. Colon- colonialism in any way, we are dropping it. So capitalism was obviously a no-no, right? Secondly, since the power was passed from the Europeans to, I mean, the new governments, right? The people were now dependent on this government to bring them out of poverty that they've mm-hmm. been experiencing under the rules of the colonizers. Right. Yeah, to basically put them on a plane on, on an equal playing field. field. Exactly. Yeah. So so it's kind of like people are dependent on the government already. And that's already kind of like a recipe for socialism. So a, a lot of like African pioneers like Namdi Azikiw of Nigeria, Kwame Nkrumah of Ghana, um actually Julius. Namdi Azikiw Nam wasn't really socialist, was he? The guy was chilling out here, man. He was chilling. But, he was uh, he was more of a capitalist guy, Loki. But yeah. not not pure, not in his pure form. I mean, that's a whole different conversation. I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> someone like Julius Inyerere, Jesus, did I, did I, did I, did I, did I, did I destroy his name? <laughs> I probably destroyed his name. And then like, how many rays? Inyerere. Inyerere. That's how you say it. There we go. Yeah. Julius Inyerere, Kwame Nkrumah, Moboto Seseseko. That's my favorite. That's my personal favorite right there. I love that name. That's a strong <laughs> ass name right there. Moboto Seseseko. It sounds like Africans pump. have strong <laughs> names, man. <laughs> <laughs> ah! <laughs> <laughs> you know, you already like when you hear that kind of thing, you think that the guy is like 6'3, as a more muscle, like, <laughs> like African fighter, the like guy everything. Comes and speaks, you better listen, like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you th- you think of what's, what's this guy's name again? Um, this UFC fighter from Cameroon. Um, um don't worry, I, you guys would, you guys, would, the people who know will know <laughs> if you know, you know. Uh, um, but yeah, so th- those are like pioneers, like so. This was Ghana, Tanzania, Guinea, Senegal. These people were all pioneers of the African socialism economic policy movement. Yeah. Movement. Yeah. Exactly. That was, that was pretty much aimed at the means of production being controlled by the government while trying to eliminate the class in society. So it's not technically socialism, it's African socialism. It's African socialism, right? So that's why we're not going to dive too deep into the Western socialism because that's a whole different debate as well, <laughs> right? right? Mm-hmm. And um, so their plan, their, plan, their plan was simple. They are going to place the economic well-being of the people on the government and then we're going to run on principles such as social development guided by a large public sector, mm-hmm. right? That's government. And then inc- incorporating the African identity and what it means to be African in the system of government. So that's kind of like falling back to what we used to do before the colonizers came into... I mean, they thought... For, they, that's what they thought that's about they falling back. Because of, those niggas were not born then. But, you know, that's <laughs> exactly. what they, they thought. Exactly. And then they're also going to avoid the development of social classes within society. Mm-hmm. That was that was the whole plan that they had. Yeah. Right? And um, so, yeah, we can break down like what that kind of looked like for... Specific nations, specific nations, right? And obviously, we can, if we're going to dive into all the nations, we'll be here forever. But we're just going to yeah. take two examples: Ghana and Tanzania, because those are the two big, big boys up. when it came to when it came to um, socialism in Africa. African socialism. African socialism, right? So you wanna you wanna talk about Ghana real quick? Yeah, I'll talk about my Ukruma. Call me Ukruma. Who wow, man? Ukruma, my big boy, big boy swag. <laughs> so as we all know, Krama and Ukruma was a was one of the leaders that were fighting for uh, independence in Ghana. And he was their first prime minister. Mm. And he was a, he was a pan-Africanist as well as a, a s- sort of socialist, but with African, you know, 
Af- sprinkles I, of African African mindset, identities. Yeah. I don't yeah. know African ideas. So his aim, he wanted to build a social a socialist structure that was Ghanaian in character Jolly, and have Jolly. an African out- outlook. So his idea was to make an like Africa as one, if that makes sense, because that was yeah. his pan African. Um, uh, ideals God, of put in okay. place. Yes, 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 yes. So, Nkrumahism, Nkrumahism. Is that, is that an actual word? Yeah, Nkrumahism. It's kind of coined. It's a coined word. Okay. Um, um, was his his social police um uh, political ideology based on what he of based of his own thinking because of he deviated f- from socially the the Western um, socialism. socialism that was the basis of his ideas. He mm. deviated slightly from there and chose and picked of what he wanted to do. Okay. Um, he was obviously inspi- inspired by Marxist socialism and his aim was to be self-reliant and he also valued um, communalism. You so know what I mean? Guy, so the guy now gave it the name Uncrumanism. Yeah, bro. I love, I love these people. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and <laughs> Chisomnism. <laughs> mm-hmm. okay, we'll and as, we'll as, as, yeah, as Chisom said, he believed in, you know, classless economies and pan-African unity um, okay. But obviously, there were some red flags. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to talk about the red flags. But he was, he made himself leader for life, as well as he, he was a one party state government. So he made him, so, so he was like, he's going to be the ultimate rule. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, that this. was probably not the plan, but there was an amendment put in place to make him world leader um, for life. No, okay. world leader, sorry. Yeah, Ghana, leader yeah. for life in Ghana. In okay. Ghana. And obviously, um, he didn't like the idea of you know relying on agriculture as the major you know economic sector of Ghana and wanted to industrialize Ghana. He wanted mm-hmm. to have uh, uh, he had this uh, huge ideas for industrialize the industrialization of Ghana as well as you know the economic development that was okay. put in place on that on for the foundation of that. Uh, so he started major, you know, economic, uh, sorry, started major infrastructure projects. You know, they started with a $60 million designated seaport in their country. Mm. Uh, and he called it the big push in industri- industrialization where, gotcha. you know, they focus on various sectors like, you know, cocoa, footwear, pharmaceutical, and many more. Um, and, mm. and since it was a socialist government, uh, with a little bit here and there, the government also owned various, sectors of the uh, market the economy economy. yeah so they owned like 50 percent of the insurance companies um you know um, 60 percent of the deposits that were deposited in state-run banks and a lot more and he had like this seven year development idea which he identified also education Mm -hmm. as uh, their number one goal of making sure the literacy rate and the debt rate in ghana were improved on Gotcha. Gotcha. So he had all these ideas and he's like mm-hmm. He had he had he had major, you know, major ideas. Okay. Yeah. So I guess I guess his heart was in the right place. Facts. <laughs> Even though he was like, I'm still going to be the supreme leader shall for life. No. Yeah, facts. <laughs> no I mean that's else. the that's an African thing, right? <laughs> no there. Else supreme leader. This year. <laughs> supreme leader. I'm the one that'll take my people to the promised land. <laughs> that's it. No one else. Oh, right. <laughs> but yeah, I can I can tell you a little bit about Junior Sinyerere and his policies, and then you can now, we can dive into the successes and failures of these policies from our socialist pioneers, right? So Junior Sinyerere was to this day, honestly, like if you if you Google him, if you like talk to Tanzanians, they love the guy. They love yeah. him because his heart was. Shout out to our Tanzanian friends. <laughs> we love you. We love you. You know yourselves. You know, like we had to. I, I had to. I had to. Uh, this. I had to call out today to like ask how to pronounce a few, a few words <laughs> like <this> today. <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, he loved his people, right? He did a lot for his people because he was an anti-colonial, anti-colonial, colonialist. Wow, hey, that was it. This, this right words, man. This words. <laughs> and and nationalist, right? Yeah, he did great things in the area of education, health, and gender equality for yeah. his people. Right, so he he's he's always there adored by his people. He's but a forward thinker without a, a doubt. Thinker, yeah, but what he believes was that capital capitalism was a cancer to the eradication of poverty and self reliance in the African economy. Mm-hmm. Right, so he was like, you know, what we're going to delete everything that resembles capitalism and establish our African socialism. Right, mm-hmm. and the way he did this was establishing something that he called Ujuma. 
Ujama. <laughs> yeah, I told you I called Ublulu to ask her how to pronounce this thing. So don't argue with me. Nah, bro. It's called Ujama. Ujama. Ujama <laughs> sounds way better. Ujama. Oh, man. All right. So this was, this, this pretty much means extended family or familyhood. And the idea of this was to village bring establish a collective agricultural system where the governments would control the means of production right so they would provide like fertilizers provide healthcare equipment, healthcare for the farmers all these things right education but then, exactly education but then all these farmers or all these people will move to a community where they would farm collectively as a group and then sell their products uh, back to the government. Back to the government at government mandated prices. Yeah. Right. And then they are going to pretty much distribute the profits among themselves. So mm-hmm. this was meant to eliminate the classes in society, you know, make sure that the community itself is self reliant. While the government takes on the bulk of like, okay, we're going to make sure you have schools, we're going to make sure you have fertilizers to keep running your farms and your businesses. Yeah, okay. and, exactly. And um, yeah, so at first, this move, obviously, because it's kind of like moving people from the cities back to villages. Even right? though they didn't want to, though. Yeah. They had to that was it. As, fr- as first, it was voluntary, right? He was like, you know, if you want to do, do. If you don't want to do, don't do. Right? But then after a while, the guy was like, you know, these people are, these people are pissing me off. All of you. <laughs> <laughs> I had to with it by force. So he actually forced people because a lot of people didn't want to do it. They were like, I'm not going back to the village. They were not patriotic yeah. enough. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, nah, man, I want to fight for myself. I make my own money. I'm already used to the wages that I get, all these things. Right? I'm not trying to do some collective system. <laughs> so the guy forced them, man. Forced them back to the villages. And and um, that, that, that was kind of like the system, right? So it was pretty much forced them. So now they are living together as a community, farming together, selling all the produces, and then splitting In the, the village, so they went back to the yeah. village. <laughs> and then splitting the profits amongst themselves. And the mm-hmm. profits is obviously like what the government... Because they're selling at government mandated prices. Mm-hmm. It's not necessarily like... There's Fair. no real incentive to like keep working hard because you already know what the price is going to be. Yeah, there's, right? there's, there's, there's yeah, no... Yeah, the, there's no mar- the, the market. The market is re- regulated. No com- yeah, exactly. No competition. No nothing. So that was pretty much his idea, right? And now we can go into the results of all. Yeah, these, facts. Right. The results. So <laughs> when it comes to when it comes to the um U- 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 Ujama plan, right? Ujama. Mm-hmm. Ujama. <laughs> <laughs> right. One of the there, there were a lot of pros that came out of it, like I mentioned before, right? Like the literacy rates in the con- in the country increased greatly mm-hmm. because a lot of people there was actually like compulsory education for the people and they had to go and it mm-hmm. was mm-hmm. government provided so mm-hmm. the healthcare mortality rate dropped a lot because there was healthcare provided for the people right these are good things that are happening in the country it's like there there was reduced tribalism because people kind of like had this tanzanian identity rather than their tribal identity Mm-hmm. when he made them go back to form villages, but it wasn't based on what tribe you're from. So yeah. it's kind of like mixing different people together. So it's kind of like, okay, we're all Tanzanians. We're not necessarily like mm-hmm. our tribe, right? You know, in Nigeria, we have Igbo, Yoruba, Aosa. We're kind of like separated in that fashion, mm-hmm. right? So these were like good things that came out of it. But then, obviously, on the other side, there's going to be the bad. Because today they are not practicing no jama anymore, <laughs> 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 and there's a re- there's a reason for that, right? One, first thing, like I mentioned before, the people didn't want to do this. We didn't want mm. to move to some collective agricultural system where there is no real profit, no nothing, right? Lack there's, of infrastructure, no, a lot of no, things. No capital gain, really. Like it's almost mm. like what's in it for me. Mm-hmm. I'm going to work, and then what am I really going to get? Right, so it's like if I if I can skip work, I'll skip it. So even the organizing the whole like everybody has to contribute to the work was difficult because mm-hmm. you cannot even incentivize someone to go out and farm. Yes, you get what I'm saying. So as a result of that, productivity also dropped. Yeah. So when the when they had the um, independent farming, the sorry compared to the um, collective farming, mm-hmm. the um, what's it called? The, the rate of production? Exactly. The rate of production dropped by 50%. Yeah. 50% compared to when they had indiv- um, independent farms, right? Yeah. And obviously, with this, this is like pretty much half of your food supply. So, yeah. Reduced. So, like, yeah, Tanzania became a, was what, 
uh, like before independence and a few years mm-hmm. after, they were a net exporter yep. of goods. Then following the, a few years of Unjama, <laughs> they became a net importer. Importer. Yeah. Yo. For you go from a net exporter to a net importer. So now you have to import food in order to feed your people. Mm-hmm. Right. So obviously, obviously this is due to other various factors, other you factors know. As well, but yeah. it led to famine mm-hmm. and the people. Something else that happened was that other sectors of the economy suffered a lot. So like the industrial sector, the banking crippled, crippled the economy. For and then also it let the eco- it, like we, the Julius Nero was chasing self a self reliant economy, mm-hmm. right? That's why he was like establishing all these Ujama and whatnot ideologies. But, yeah, exactly. But at the end of the day, he left the country dependent on international aid due yeah. to the failing economy. Yeah. So Ujama was considered a failure. I mean, it was a failure. Not it considered. A, it is a failure. Yeah, it was a failure. Right, and then obviously, like I can break down, there are other reasons that led to it as well, right? Like yeah. uh, in the nineteen seventies, there was an oil crisis, so the the um, prices for commodities dropped, right? So their exports dropped, right? There was also a lack of foreign in- direct investments because everything was controlled by the government. It's kind of like there's no there's no incentive for someone to go and invest their money in that economy, mm-hmm. right? Because the market is controlled. And then there was they had droughts as well, so that was kind of like a natural disaster, which which was unfortunate. And they also had a war with mm-hmm. the neighboring country, which also depleted their. I think that one is a major one. The, the war with Uganda. Yeah, that was a, that was a major one. You really shout out to my Uganda resources. brothers out here. <laughs> we depleted my, their my Uganda by ladies too. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, and um, yeah. So that that was the ma- th- those are the major shortcomings when it came to the Ujama project uh let me let me break down my ghanian guy because my ghanian guy is not as you know clean or <laughs> like clean good-hearted <laughs> not as good-hearted as my you know tanzania funny, brother the, the, you know the funny thing, what you mentioned that as uh how how in your how in your area stepped down he actually just voluntarily stepped out even though mm-hmm. he was technically president for like 20 years but mm-hmm. <laughs> but he still voluntarily stepped out at some point just like you know what this thing failed <laughs> so, <laughs> someone else come and take I'm it. out. <laughs> I, I'm retiring, but someone else come and carry this. Come and carry this yeah. cross. I'm done. <laughs> yeah. Um. For the pros of the you know in yeah, the area yeah. regime, Ooh. um, Chiso, we are on sync, bro. <laughs> Wavelength, right there. Wavelength. But the pros were just the same as Chiso said. You know, increased literacy rate. You know, remove your colonial past. Um, healthcare increase. Um, um life expectancy increased. Mm-hmm. And you know, so on and so on of whatever Chisholm's examples gave. But let me go to the cons because these are the mo- much more interesting part. The cons of the um uh was it Nkrumah regime was one that the state run industry failed dramatically. Mm. The industrialization push that he had failed miserably because there were, the obviously it was government controlled, so there was a lack of Count, uh, accountability in the system mm, and gosh. you know that's that's a huge amount of corruption in that in that in place let me give you an example one of the worst examples but it's one of the sweetest mm. so one of the you know m- uh, major projects that he had was um, having a factory that produced you know or that processed mangoes and for okay. you to have a factory that processed mangoes you need mango trees right yeah it, that's where I you mean, get the you mangoes from mangoes yeah yeah, and the, the capacity of that plant was supposed to have, you know, process, you know, 7,000 tons of mango a year. Okay. But, you know, after 80% of the budget was spent and like, of started building, they found out that there were hardly any wild mango trees in the vicinity of the factory. You know what I'm trying to say? Wait, so, they basically wait, wait. rendered the factory useless or close to being useless. What? You know? Wait, so um, had... wait sorry, sir. Yeah. They built... How much did they spend on this factory? Do you know? I don't know exactly how much they spent, but, but I'm they sure they spent a lot. The whole factory, like eighty like percent of it was complete. Done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They no, eighty percent of the cost was spent already. Was spent already. Yeah. They now realize that they don't have mango. Yeah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and and even though you know, in in Nkrumah understood that his government was too reliant on the agricultural sector. Mm-hmm. 
um, he was throughout his regime, he was still reliant on the the agricultural sector, even though he tried to diversify the means mm-hmm. of um, wealth in the nation. Um, gotcha. So they were still reliant on cocoa, which was declining in the world economy. So you know that cost cut the budget in which he could use uh, the taxation that he got from that type of you know uh, production of mm-hmm. of 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 goods. Um, obviously, he cracked down on free speech because of it, it was a one-party state, and he made himself world leader, which mm-hmm. is all bad. He had one of one of his boys' wife, one of his like mates, one of his colleagues in mm-hmm. the party. His wife bought a gold uh, bat and also had twenty-seven houses across. So there was large-scale corruption throughout the party. Hold on, hold on. He cracked down on free speech. There were multiple coups attempts trying to kick him off. And finally, they succeeded because of he went to uh, on a trip across, you know, um, Russia and China. And a, without him, of, without his knowing, the coup has already taken over the nation and announced that, you know, Nkrumah is no longer in charge while Nkrumah was in China. Okay. And he, he, he blamed the CIA and other world and other, you know, European powers of trying Maybe, to yeah, plot like against it. him. Yeah. And he was a uh, he, he lived a par- a paranoid life after that. Uh, so I think one of his major feelings was obviously the lack of accountability in his party mm-hmm. of making it a one party state. This is what usually happens with socialist ideals mm-hmm. um, that you. are put into uh, um, practice. Yeah, because they have this one vision and they always believe that they're right and this is where we should go without listening or consulting the people in which they are trying to lead to the promised land. Yeah. Uh, so he, that was one of his huge faults of not checking and keeping accountability of the government of the government parties put in place you know so all of it had a lot of failed projects that you know just uh, spending a lot of money obviously like the another one would be like the Ghanaian airways which was you know serviced by the soviets but no Ghanaian passengers were usually going through that route so it was highly costly for the government just shredding them from a lot of money so it's a, a lot of key things that you know even if it was a, a private individual who had to take the course would be extremely careful of and okay. extremely you know detailed in terms of understanding what makes his business profitable and unprofitable because it's the government and they yeah. control the market or they re- regulate the market and the eye player there was lack of accountability in that kind of system even yeah. though it could have, even though it could have been better if it was a multifaceted system mm. Yeah, right. and you know they also hated capitalism, which was a bad idea. Because if it was a one-party system or a socialist system, and they loved capitalism, it would just be like China. But you know we had a different idea of um, what we wanted for our economic system in Ghana. I mean, we, I mean Ghana did because I'm not a Ghanaian, <laughs> but Ghanaian had a, a different idea. Oh man, but yeah, so that's I what mean, happened. I mean, when I think about all these things, right? Like all these things, like you mentioned that, like. Someone went to buy a gold bed, or was it a gold shower, or a gold bath? What was that? It was a gold. It was, well, I think it was a gold bed or a gold bath. It has, it was, <laughs> it's like uh, those stupid amounts like, of money, like, bro. Okay, and twenty-seven like houses. A, so, in the end, what these African leaders were trying to do was one: eliminate social classes. Yeah. Right? AKA creating equality for all. You know, like removing all these corruptions that the colonialists had going on. supposedly implemented exactly right that was th- those are their goals but now when you move that to the government there's always a class there's still regardless. class going on there's always there's a class. Still class going on it's kind of like okay like the, the the only thing is the government is now the high class and yeah. then the low class is pretty much the, the regular people like you and me mm-hmm. right and um so there's no accountability because they are the referee that's also playing in the same game so yeah. in the end of the day right like the history speaks for itself socialism in africa failed us woefully like and there's too woefully. many examples if you look at guinea with the abundance of natural resources all over uganda the place, senegal uganda even zimbabwe mm-hmm. so in zimbabwe i remember, I remember we we're talking about um was in nigeria i was just like yo like if i take <laughs> if i go to zimbabwe i'll be a billionaire 
Because I think bread was like one million Zimb- yeah, one loaf of bread was like one million Zimbabwe crazy. dollars. I was like, bro, <laughs> <laughs> their currency oh, became man. useless. That's what yeah. happened. I mean, that is not just socialism, to be honest. That was more like corruption and some other things. That was so a combination of them. But what what socialism inherently has is that the room of you know having a player and a referee, yeah, being one, which is a bad combination that leads to a, a higher possibility of corruption. Yep. If yep. they're not checks and balances put in place. Yep. So so there's definitely room to control capitalism because we saw from the example of what the Europeans did to us, it, they can easily capitalize on us. Mm. Right? You can easily capitalize on like the rich can easily capitalize on the poor mm. in a pure capitalist system. Oh uh, I, 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 you, you, um yes. Kinda. Yes. Kinda. Yes, I I, yes, I was gonna yes say that no. European capitalism is not the, the colonial capitalism is not um the okay. ideal, form of, ideal form of capitalism because of gotcha. the this the market is also re- re- regulated and mm. it's not inherently yep. free you yep. know what i mean yep 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 yep, yep. everyone is playing by the same rules exactly exactly got you got you got you so it's um so all in all right let's just try to like bring this together going forward what do you think we should do right like to i don't know like what economic system do you think we can use in nigeria for example now yeah, I believe, into prosperity. I believe that um, Nigeria, what Nigeria needs to do to blow, we need because because we can blow on the verge of blowing up. <laughs> we can blow, but I think what Nigeria needs to do is have less more, have 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 less more English, have less bureaucracy, so have less government hands put in place because the government in Nigeria is so inefficient and corrupt, wild scale mm. corruption. The gov the, the it supposedly thought that. Like a single government official is paid eighty thousand dollars a month, while you know a regular Nigerian will have to take like three hundred and sixty nine years to end the same. As the average Nigerian will take three hundred and have to work three hundred and sixty nine years to end as much as that in a year. Damn. You know what I mean? So it's like it's like a crazy amount of money that our government officials earn, and we have a lot of you know uh, um, organizations. I don't know what they call them. We have a lot of government bodies that are useless now, basically like, like ministries. One. Yeah, ministries that are highly inefficient mm. and it could be put under one body and could be more efficient. But and the government is obviously very controlling, control, yeah, controlling. Mm-hmm. And uh, I feel that if Nigeria embraced much more, a much more capitalist uh, idea to be beneficial to the people because we are highly creative people we do great things across the, um outside nigeria in mm-hmm. europe in asia in the us in south america in south africa even though they don't like us there but in south africa we do amazing things you guys are haters it's all right <laughs> okay, i think back i think you guys are not haters all right we're just having difficulties difficult difficult even also even in tanzania you know you know Af- nigerians are just out here do, doing lit things but that's yeah, what this i is, think this is the this is the uh, hype nigeria session okay, 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 i'm sorry <laughs> this I, is the hype nigeria session i just let me ask you should we do socialism or capitalism i feel that we should be a mix i feel that the government should should um know what is because of what happens with capitalism capitalism does not see um, the necessities of what is needed in the uh, economy, or in not in the economy, but in the in the people, in the individual, okay. you know, um, or, or on a grand scale of things. Like capitalism is just supply and demand; it has no face. Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say? There's no like if, morals involved. There's no morals involved. That's why the government has to put in place and has has to re- regulate and make sure people are not getting ab- abused in a in a just a, a full capitalist uh, system. Mm-hmm. That's why the government should be a referee and a very good referee. That should be mm. the aim of the government. Okay, to kind of step in and make sure that there's no mm-hmm. foul play involved. And obviously, have a have have a social safety net. You know, have like people on the sidelines. If you get injured, the government can help you carry carry off the pitch, mm-hmm. and you know, quick substitution. <laughs> got you, got you, got you. All right. Football so, reference. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess, I guess, I guess, in order to do this, right, like talking about like the whole mix system of the combining the government and the and allowing the free market to run as well, mm-hmm. we can take a few case studies, right? Because it's not something that is just like it's not a theory. It's been tested. It's, it's been tested, right? Like so and in Africa, in Africa too. That's wild. In Africa, right? 
take two case studies. Rwanda. <laughs> Rwanda. If you know, we don't want to say this. Even though we don't want to say this, man. Damn. Ah. But Rwanda, man, shout out to you guys. I'm sure like, out, <laughs> like our Rwanda president. friends will be laughing right now. Shout out to your president, man. Oh, uh, Rwanda and Botswana. I don't know anyone from Botswana, so I don't buy happy them up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, but yeah, Rwanda and Botswana, right? We can take his case studies from these two countries to see how, to just see how they, they kind of like took their countries from rags to glory, right? So from rags to riches. Rags to riches. Let's 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 talk about Rwanda first, real quick, right? So, um, we all no, we all know, but if you don't know about the Rwandan genocide, honestly, you should Google it. Yeah, just look it up. It's something that you should know about. But about 1994, there was an intertribal war that led to the death of about 800 thousand people. I'm not going to go too deep into what led to it and all that, right? Yeah, and but obviously was, the the UN ignored it, which is quite funny. Just to show how useless the UN is, by the way. <laughs> you come at me, you're useless. <laughs> oh man, yeah, I'm picking up fire to the UN. All right, and then, <laughs> and then um, eight hundred thousand people died. The economy was trash. Everything was looking bad, right? But what Kagame Paul came from the ashes? Kagame, he came from the ashes, up, like the knights. They are hero. His people to the promised land. Right? Facts. What he did in a few short years. Let me say a few short years, but I mean twenty years. In the life of a country, that's in quite a few short. Decades, in a few right? decades. <laughs> yeah, like a few, few decades, right? <laughs> he increased the GDP of his country, rising 8.2%. Per year. Dropped, per year, dropped poverty rates by 57%. 57%, more than a half. Percent. And, it's not, and it's not considered one of the fastest growing economies in the world. Exactly. In the world, not in Africa, bro. In the Think world. About. In the world. This is a country we're talking about. It's a small country in Africa, by yeah. the way. And then the yeah, foreign direct investment. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say something bad. I'm not going to say it. 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 Oh, I'm not going to say it. Oh, I'm not going to say it. Oh, I'm not going to say it. Just hit it back inside. Let's just stay inside that head of you. Oh, oh my gosh. I'm not going to say it. You understand my reference. You understand what I'm trying to say? Oh, man. I don't know what you're going to say. Oh, my God. This guy. You're so old. <laughs> you finally got to the <laughs> Yo, 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 continue. I feel, I feel like they even know what you're talking about. But it's fine. We'll keep moving. <laughs> For the right investment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and they're foreign direct. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> the they're foreign direct investment. But are doubled. Mm, which is also a good thing for the economy. If yeah. people want to invest in your economy. Foreigners is a no, good I'm, indicator of a, know, good, of a good It's a good economy. indicator for a good economy. Yeah. Yep. The question is now, how did he do it, right? Like, because it wasn't magic. How did mm-hmm. he do this? So we can break it down. First thing he did was embracing the free market. Baga, correct. Embracing Check. the private sector, right? So pretty much, he invested in infrastructure to attract foreign investments to this country. Invested in labor-intensive sectors like mining, agri-tourism, and construction. Mm-hmm. But what he did was that the government didn't own it. Therefore, the government didn't control the market. Right? He just invested in it to allow his people to be able to take it away. You know, yeah, like, I can't close my name, but I'm sorry. <laughs> well, continue, continue, continue. <laughs> <laughs> this guy... <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry, man. <laughs> Yo, if any if any Rwanda says this, I'm so sorry, man. I'm so sorry. Oh, I didn't man. say anything, but you, you guys should watch the video on YouTube, man. Oh my god. <laughs> That's all I have to this say. Guy. Anyways, the second thing he did, right, was he stood against corruption, obviously. Right. Mm-hmm. For any country to work, you can't mm-hmm. have corruption. That was the basic thing. Right. And standing against corruption means you are reducing the possibility of corruption even happening. Right. So you are not Giving the whole means of production of a whole economy to a few people, yeah. Spread it out one first of all, which increases competition. Com- increasing competition, so now you know that you have to produce quality pro- um, products mm-hmm. at the cheapest rate possible, so that people will be interested in your products, mm-hmm. right? And then what he also did was even the people or the ministers that he had, he made sure to put the right checks and balances in place to make sure that they are doing their job. Big right. man things. Like you're not out here building mango plants 
when you don't even have mango. <laughs> yeah, bro. <laughs> it's like, what are you doing, fam? Mm-hmm. Oh, man. And then one other thing he did was a push for gender equality. Shout out to my females. Shout out to the women out here, man. Shout out to the guy. Yeah, you can't say females anymore, apparently. You know, like, oh, uh, my gosh. Yeah, I am so you, sorry. You call I'm females. so sorry. Please yeah. do not fire me. I am so <laughs> Don't cancel me. I am so sorry. I didn't mean... I didn't understand that female was such a... Digger, uh, English. Yeah, was such a for... bad word. <laughs> <laughs> Back to what I was saying. Gender, and equ- gender equality. Right? So... <laughs> uh, 56% of his parliament was made up of women. That's my... F- there were more women than men that think men. about that so I'm just like maybe it's not even a socialism capitalism issue maybe it's a man woman issue you just yeah, need to, man, all this country woman. just need to get rid of we need women in charge get rid of all these men that are holding us back that poor women they, they African men egotistic no man to put that in, compar- in, in context right like there's only 32% of women in the parliament in the UK and 20% in the US yeah US is slacking out here exactly so that was dope. And then one of the other things that he did was targeted social welfare programs. Oh, what is that? This is where socialism can Ooh. actually be a benefit. Targeted wow. social welfare programs. What he did was that he subsidized rural farmers by providing them with cows, produce, fertilizer, fertilizers, you know, like healthcare for their for their um for their animals. Mm-hmm. So it was these are like things that he did to give them a fighting chance in the market. Mm-hmm. Give them so a what, to what, fight what the they're trying to tell me that he used his brain yeah not his emotion he wasn't out here trying to focus on removing class he wasn't was out he wasn't out there scrutinizing the people. Of you know he wasn't he like he he, he brought it to guidance mm. he was not trying to alienate anyone you know exactly big so boy he, thing he, big he boy was thing. trying to he was trying to make one he's kind of like yo do your thing you can become as rich as you want to do as you want to be but even the poorest of the poor will have a certain standard of living. Now I feel like that's all we that's what we should all kind of like look for, you know, like kind of like strive for. You know what I'm saying? And these are the things that kind of like made Rwanda what they are today. Like today, like even to this day, Professor Wale cannot stop talking about Rwanda. Yeah. You know what I'm Professor Wale is like, our, our professor in, that, in like, college. Like all of our own is hyping is like, hyping like, up Rwanda, Rwanda so much. It's Rwanda's like, like well, I'm just like I have I to, to go. I have to, to, visit, to see it in my own yeah, eyes. I, I, I had to visit that country. But apparently, it's the cleanest. I think it's the cleanest country in the world, or one, oh, or, or the Africa. cleanest in Africa, probably. Yeah, something like that. It's like just good. I mean, something else really clean, but it's okay. Huh? I said something else is really clean, but it's okay. Uh, moving on to Botswana. <laughs> 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 yeah, moving on to Botswana. I shall Bos- talk about big, big up Botswana. Big up, big, um, up, big up. So well, Botswana, when it started, when it gained in, in its independence, uh, was the second poorest um, nation in the world second in nineteen poorest. The second poorest nation in the second. world. <sighs> second number number two poorest. Damn, in the world. All right. Damn. They only um, had twenty-two. Let me let, let, let me let me put that in perspective. So, the country only had twenty-two people with university degrees and one hundred people with high school degrees out of a population of six hundred thousand. Think about that. Two people with yeah. university degrees. Yes. And one hundred people. Damn. So basically, one out of six thousand people had a high school diploma. <laughs> high school. Second. High school. school. Hey, Omo. No, that, that, okay, that's poor. That's, that's quick it's, match. It's quite poor, isn't it? Quick it's match. quite poor, isn't it? But if you, if you guys have ever watched this movie called... What's the, what's the movie called? United Kingdom. United Kingdom. I don't know the guy's name, but... Do you know his name? I don't know his name, too. Okay, so... Know. So, Cha, the guy who married a white woman out Sir, here... Oh, is it Takama? <laughs> Yeah, 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 that oh, okay, okay, he was yeah. one. That, he was one. That, who was one in charge? Mm, but you know, he went, to, he went to UK, brought <laughs> his white wife, and <laughs> he, he obviously he was dethroned. But you know, when um, Botswana gets independence, they had a democratic election, and he won by a landslide. Oh yeah. So he was the first president, and his white wife was the first 
lady. Why are you? Why are you? Why are you it is mad. I'm not saying that's some mad shit, bro. Why that's just, okay, that's what, crazy. Sixty-six interracial marriages was probably yeah. It was definitely it was a, a huge deal. I don't even know. What it, I, don't, I don't even know if it was if it was the the road, <laughs> if he was just doing his own thing. That, that, that. <laughs> that was the apartheid. Like yeah, he um, was in south south of Africa, bro. He was yeah. close to South Africa, man. Whew. So he was doing some madness. He was doing some madness out here. Crazy uh, man. Balls the cook. He had cojones. Very, very smart man, too. Very, yeah, very smart, smart man. man. Very smart man. Because I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna tell you what he, he accomplished with having the second poorest nation in the world. Right now, Botswana is one of the fastest growing economy in the world. And it's one of the least corrupt nations in Africa. Think about least corrupt. And it's one of the most peaceful. Mm. Think about from the second poorest to, to have all these great attributes growing, to your nation. Fastest growing economy mm-hmm. in the is it in the world? In the world, not mm-hmm. just in Africa. Mm-hmm. It's one of the fastest. It's one of the fastest. Wow. Um, but I'll tell you how he did it because he's a very intelligent man. I think that UK degree taught him something very well. <laughs> um, <laughs> he made smart government private sector deals. So he understood his own nation, what his nation was in trouble for, and mm-hmm. what his nation had as a bargaining chip. He knew his nation was abandoned in diamond and other natural resources. Abandoned. Aban- oh, abundant. <laughs> <It's> like abundant. <laughs> abundant. Sorry for my 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 I don't even know what to call it. My 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 Nigerian. I blame Nigeria for my English, bro. What do you guys think? Stop it, Nigeria. Yo, abundant. Yo, abundant. He knew his coach. Yo, chill, man. Chill, 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 chill. Let's keep over that, man. Let's keep over that. He knew his country was abundant in diamond. And he made a deal with a diamond mining company where 70% of the profit was going to go to the government and the government was able to buy the company up over mm-hmm. time. And this made his, 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 first of all, this made his, his uh, government have a surplus of money spending. So that means the government was running out of surplus. You know, they were not taking any debt or in any way, shape or form. So he had the ability to, you know, spend money on schools for better schools, better money for healthcare, better money for, you know, other social causes. That's what I'm trying to say. So what you're saying right now is that pretty socialist right now. Hmm? It sounds pretty he had, socialist yeah, right yeah, he, he had some socialist policies. Okay. In fact, grandiose socialist policies. But he made a smart deal using capitalism. You understand what I'm trying to say? He made a smart deal using capitalism because he understand that. He understood, sorry. He understood that f- he could not be, he, he, he could not rely on his people to, um, no offense, but during that time, he cannot rely on his people to extract and be profitable enough. I mean, only twenty two of them company. had a college degree, so there's only <laughs> yeah, like only how can twenty two people have college degrees and you, you expect to you know mine a whole gold mine and make that extremely efficient and profitable? So he made a deal with w- some people that were considered the devil, you know, European diamond mining company, and they came in. But he made a very smart deal because he was able to get 70% of profits, right? Mm-hmm. And was able to buy back some parts of the company over time. So it's not all government owned, but running at an efficient rate. Okay. You understand? Right? So the government is, is, a, is a shareholder, but does not control the means of production. Gotcha. Gotcha. Beautiful things. Beautiful, beautiful. things. Beautiful and something things. else that he adopted was very friendly business policies, mm-hmm. e.g., low corporate and income tax. Mm hmm. Low, by the way, aka not really socialist, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Low import tariffs, you know, and a merit based system based on your abilities rather than your race or your tribe. Facts, bro. So it's kind of so it's kind of like yo, like I'm going to put the best mouth for the job. Ah, in that, just in that on your position. triggers. I'm going to, so, so that's kind of like, it's kind of like it's kind of like referencing like because a lot of things like during the independent period was kind of like yo, get rid of all the Western people. And then put all the Westerners and then put in indigenous people, which yeah. I think is dope. Ah. You know, like we should eventually try to put it, put that, put them there. Mm-hmm. But you can't just put someone that doesn't know how to run a country. Yeah, I mean, you know, well, what like, he what he did for that kind of situation, he he educated his people over time. Exactly. And 
let them replace those positions who are competent exactly. enough. When it's not trying to be enough, not just when they're competent enough, not just giving them a, your brother inside there just because your brother or putting your putting your wife's uncle inside. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So yeah. like he did all this and then he also invited foreign companies to invest in the land. Mm-hmm. Again, opening up to the free market. You know, it's kinda like, yo, like invest, man, do your thing. Cause if 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 there's investment going on in your country, right? If you if money is moving in your country, that's a good sign that your economy is good. Right? Like if I'm trying to invest because I'm in the US now, if I'm trying to invest in Nigeria, right? If I know that the economy is good, I want to spend money in Nigeria. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Spend my money back there. But the beautiful thing is that, you know, even though it is an indicator, it's not outright. It's that outright. is why he implemented socialist policies. Exactly. Free healthcare, free mm-hmm. education, et cetera, et cetera. Because he understood that like the market is not the only definition of what success is. Yep. Having a big economy is not the only only definition of what success is. It's what your people accomplish or what your people are living in, what kind of situation they're living in. So that was also very important. But he understood that how he understood how the market worked. He had a holistic approach. He was not short sighted. He was not short minded. Yep. You know? Very beautiful man. Congratulations. So it's, uh, it's kinda like it's more of a pragmatic or practical style if, of yo, movement <laughs> rather than just ideological. Yes. Right. Yes, yes. That, he was that was honestly very intelligent man. man you I know from I the UK. Idea, I didn't hear right. There are different yeah, styles. I, I want to say something controversial, but I'm not gonna say it. <laughs> <laughs> what's it about? What's it about? I'm not gonna say it. I'm not gonna say what, it. What's it about? I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut this part out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what I was gonna say? What? I'm gonna say it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah, I didn't hear right. I feel like you, you need to know your own country to know what will work. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't think we should be focused on, oh, we should just be capitalist or we should just be socialist. I feel like we should take the good here, take the good the there. Um, exactly, combine it. Because if you go to the Scandinavian countries, they have a different style that's working for them. If you come to the US, which is the biggest economy in the world, they have a different style that's also well, working yeah, for them. But yeah, obviously, yeah, there's still short terms. Huh? I say it's the biggest economy in the world, but their life expectancy is increasing. So it just shows the contrast. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's um, it's just um, know your country or know your people, know where you are, and implement the most practical system. Right. That's suited for you. Yeah. That can that can get both sides. Yep. Exactly. You you reach out to the rich, you reach out to the poor, and everyone is able to play the game. Mm-hmm. Exactly. That's my personal opinion. But obviously, we're just two boys. We'd we'll love to hear your yeah, opinion. We're just two Niger boys that have with certain opinions. It's not it's not facts, you know? So yeah. if you have different di- varying opinions, if you feel like you like it's either socialism or nothing, or is it that capitalism? Feel like it's not either capitalism or nothing, let us know as well. Like email us AfroJournal2020 at Gmail. Send us some tweets. Exactly. Tweet at us. Afro leave us journal record, on record your message. Exactly you know? on um Facebook on as well. You know, yeah. like definitely like send us messages because we would like to hear from you guys. Simple discourse. I, I feel like I feel, I feel like it's very healthy, and yeah. the more we talk about it, the more we learn about it. And the more as we Africans, talk because of exactly. we're the future, baby. We are the future, baby. But um, yeah, man, I think we we'll ended there, right? Yeah, yeah. I think was- Thank you so much for joining us in this week's episode of the Afro Journal Podcast. I'm going to leave you with a proverb for next week. And the proverb is, fine words do not produce food. Fine words do not produce food. Come through next week for the interpretation. It's your boy, Chisom Okafo, and I'm here with Peter Nketukim Aliogo Jr. There we go. Catch you next time. (laughs) Adios. Peace.